Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the Bitcoin price this Friday. There's so much to talk about heading into the weekend. I just got our on-chain exchange flow numbers with over $200 million of Bitcoin entering exchanges to start the weekend off with. We know the cryptocurrency markets are the most manipulated on the weekends. Having a ton of Bitcoin on exchanges could really bring sell pressure on the order books. And then we're also seeing over a quarter million dollars of fuel leave exchanges with USDT coming off of exchanges. People use USDT to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. If they're coming off of exchanges, then we really have to address the bears and the bulls on the Snipers channel today, especially because of the fact that the NASDAQ just had a death cross with its 50 period moving average crossing below its 200 period moving average on the daily chart. There's a lot of puzzle pieces to talk about today. We're not going to focus too much on the DXY pushing up. Everyone's talking about it. The S&P 500 showing some weakness today, but it hasn't breached its recent consolidation lows. This is a big puzzle piece because what people aren't talking about is that Japan did breach its recent consolidation lows and the Euro 100 also slipping, China also slipping. Does that mean the S&P 500 is ready to see weakness? I wouldn't say that that's the case, but what I will say is that if it does see weakness into Monday and Tuesday, that doesn't mean Bitcoin has to see further lows because remember what we talked about with the monthly candle close, Bitcoin is the stronger asset, even though the S&P 500 has been breaching lows day after day, and we're seeing the February candle breach the January candle lows. Bitcoin didn't do that. It's the stronger asset right now, despite this geopolitical tension, despite these narratives that people are putting out there. Now, exactly as we predicted yesterday, 41,950 hourly and four hour candle confirmations. Let's dive straight into the chart snipers. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. As soon as we saw those hourly and four hour candle confirmations, Bitcoin came, tested this 50 day moving average exactly as we talked about. Now, I have this new channel formed here in orange that I want you guys to pay attention to. I took the highs of this recent consolidation and the lows of this recent consolidation. And you can see it's also showing confluence with where we're currently at at 40,700. Now, here's what we have to talk about. If we're going to address the bears and the bulls today, the first thing I'm going to say is that 41,950 is the range resistance that we have. If we get above that, we can start seeing some bullish momentum, talk about upside targets. And 38,000 is the most obvious support level, not just our support level, but everyone's talking about 38,000 now being a major support level. And so here's where it becomes interesting, snipers. This is why you guys tune into this channel. We think like institutions. We don't think like retail. We look at the institutional time frame, like the six hour chart. But more importantly, what I'll say is that if 38,000 is such a known support level and we want to think like an institution, what I'm going to put out there, and this is a bold statement, not new for those tuned into the Cypress channel over the last five years, every single day, making a video on Bitcoin's price. We have the number one cryptocurrency technical analysis on the internet. I've made many bold statements in the past. What I'll say is that if 40,700 is breached with hourly and four hour decisive confirmations, that means we get below the 50 day moving average. I don't believe 38,000 is going to be the next destination. I think that will come down to test 35,000 US dollars because that would put a potential scenario on the table where we form one more higher low to really test whether or not Bitcoin wants to bottom out at this macro support range. So how would that play out on the charts? Well, if we breach below 40,700 hourly and four hour decisive candles putting us below this range support, the 50 day moving average, that tells me that we potentially come down to see whether or not Bitcoin could form a higher low and not breach the $34,000 level, potentially bouncing around the $35,000 level, holding the support. Obviously, if this support is breached and this higher low is breached, this right here would be a very bad thing for Bitcoin to potentially come even further down to a new range towards the $26,000 level. So the reason this is important right now at 40,700 is that if we can't hold, we're going to be really testing Bitcoin's price at that point, because I don't think that with the weekly open, the previous weekly open and the major volume support at 38,000, everyone knows about this level. The markets love to do the exact opposite of what most people think. Why would 38,000 be the destination Bitcoin is looking for right now if we breach below 40,700, which is the 50 day moving average. So with the Nasdaq showing a death cross today, 
I do want to address some of the revolving parts of the market that most people aren't talking about. Obviously, the strength of the U.S. dollar against all other major currencies right now breaking out, which is causing traditional markets to falter. And that's obviously affecting the Bitcoin's price. Now, realize this with the DXY right now. If we want to assume the next resistance, we're actually approaching that very closely right now, right around that 99 level. And so we could see a garden variety pushback by the bears there. That would allow some room for the S&P 500 to potentially move sideways. And that could allow Bitcoin to even outperform as it has been over the last few months, especially with this geopolitical tension. Now, commodities obviously are strong right now, which is not a surprise. But I think that the most important thing to realize is the fact that with the fear in the market, most people don't understand how the cryptocurrency market works, right? There's Bitcoin dominance, which is also moving up right now, which means that when Bitcoin has downside moves, altcoins will bleed in comparison to the amount of downside pressure Bitcoin shows. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Bitcoin is a trillion dollar asset and these altcoins, most of them are less than a $50 billion asset. And so with a lot smaller of a market cap, they're going to be a lot more volatile. But what's more important to realize is that we have to also look at where is there opportunity in the market when it comes to fundamentally sound projects. If altcoins right now are really getting hammered with the fear, then I think that that bolsters a very big opportunity for entries in the long term as well. And so Bitcoin dominance is something I'm going to be monitoring here on the Sniper's channel over the next few days because we are approaching this extremely important resistance. We've actually already hit it at 44%. And so we could expect some sort of a reaction here. And if that's the case, then that could garner opportunities for old coins if we see even further sideways price action, which is very likely, but those upside moves is where we take advantage of those entries. Uh, but just keep in mind that we are seeing weakness with altcoins. Uh, the theory of Bitcoin chart is the leading indicator for us, and that has started to test the major support level. I'm not going to pull up the chart because we've yet to breach it, but the altcoins outside of Ethereum have already breached their major support level. And so we know that there is going to be more fear potentially coming into the altcoin markets. And so we want to keep monitoring that to see where's Bitcoin dominance going to start finding some sort of a more stable range because right now it's really moving to the upside forming new yearly highs almost on a daily basis and so it's obviously in a transitionary phase so a lot to cover today guys not a surprise we talked about 41,950 being that major level if we continue to see downside momentum below 40,700 then we cannot assume 38,000 is going to hold everyone's talking about that level and the markets will always do exactly the opposite of what people think and so we'll have to assume 35,000 is going to get tested. If that gets breached, 25,880, the next major level. But the range that we're currently playing in has a support of 38,000 and a resistance of 41,950. That's what you have to keep in mind right now. 40,700 is just where the 50 days sitting and the midpoint of the channel that we're in with this recent consolidation. I still believe Bitcoin will outperform the S&P 500 with the geopolitical tension. Nothing has changed in the last few days. It's still a hedge, just like gold is. It's just a digital version, a different type of version. And so we want to keep that in mind. So if the S&P 500 does falter, it sees further lows, that doesn't mean Bitcoin has to do that. And that was clearly proven with the January and February monthly candle, as we had discussed here. And so with that, thank you all for tuning in to Sniper's channel today. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And as things progress, I will let you guys know what's going on and we'll continue to update you guys as always. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Snipers out.